Now it would be a bit of an understatement to say that the shift quality in our 13s for 1300 project car was a bit ordinary. I mean seriously, my grandmother shifts harder than this thing does. But there is a solution. You see the auto transmissions in these Falcons are fully electronic, okay, so everything is electronic, all the shift hardness and everything, everything's electronic, alright. And it can be fooled into doing stuff that you want it to do, alright. So you add a resistor here and a trim pot there and all of a sudden you can make these things shift like a champion. So now it's time to break out the soldering iron and a couple of wires and uh, we'll show you how to do your own homemade shift kit for a 98 Falcon. Okay, so we're going to need three lengths of wire to do the job. We're cutting into a green wire. So I've got two green wires and we're joining on a red wire. So I've got one red wire. All right. Use whatever colour you want, but I'm just trying to keep it all colour coded. So what we're doing is soldering a little trim pot into the system, and that will be working along with a 18 ohm resistor I have to adjust the sensitivity of the shifts. Okay, so the more we turn it up, the harder the shifts will be. The more we turn it down, softer. All right, pretty simple. So we'll put that on our little uh, dash panel that we've made and use the nitro switches and everything on. So we'll put that in the system and that will allow us to adjust the sensitivity of our shifts and hopefully help the performance of the Falcon. Okay, so here's our little trim pot and I'll put the J car part number up on the video so you can all see. Now the tags are numbered 1, 2 and 3. Now this little piggy gets a green wire, this little piggy gets a green and red wire and this one goes wee 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 all the way home, it gets nothing at all. Okay, so we'll solder our wires onto these tags and we'll move on. Now we've got our soldering iron nice and hot so I'll uh, just give it a bit of a test there we go just tin our tag All right, and we'll tin this one as well okay so what I'll do is I'll get our uh, wires and we'll attach them wasn't the best but anyway we'll keep going that one's much better okay so there's our little trim pot all soldered ready to go bit of insulation tape there to protect the joints okay so we'll mount this on our little dash plate that where we have our nitro switches and I've got a little knob here so we'll put that on and we can adjust the sensitivity of the shift point okay so we've also got this 18 ohm resistor which has to be wired into the red wire okay so I'll show up a proper circuit diagram on the video but and I'll also give you the part number of this uh, particular resistor all right so we'll just solder this into the red wire circuit and uh, then we might put some heat shrink over it in the iron a bit, bring the iron up underneath and the heat travels through it pretty quickly. Okay. There we go. Okay, here's our other side. Again, soldering iron underneath, solder coming from the top. Okay. There we go. Now for this next bit, we'll be working with the ECU, which is usually held in by this strap and a Phillips head screw. So you undo the screw, as I've already done and pull the ECU out a, a bit and then you'll be able to undo this 10 mil bolt on the back which I've already done okay and then put the ECU to the side now what I've done is I've also unclipped part of the ECU loom alright with these large clips here 
unclip that from where they're usually held into to make this part easier to do. Now on the back of the, the uh, ECU connector is this black plastic cover and that will have to come off too. So we'll just unclip that and that just pops off and we'll keep that aside for later. So then next bit is we've got to find our correct wires. All right. Now I've got this little uh, pinout diagram that I've downloaded off the net and I'll show up a close up of that later on. And uh, yeah, we'll find the, by looking at this, we'll find the correct wires. We know one's red and one's green. So we'll get a close up here and have a look and see which are our wires that we need. Okay, so here's our diagram and I've already worked out I'm looking for pins 57 and 38. Uh, 38 will be a green wire and 57 will be a red wire. Okay, now here's a trick for young players. You look at this chart and it's easy to believe that you're actually supposed to be looking at it from a front direction. Okay, so you look at it that way, and you look at it that way and you think, oh yeah, this is going to be a piece of piss. What you're actually doing is you're looking at it from the back side. All right. Now, the reason you can tell this, I don't know, you can see the little numbers next to the pins, okay? Now, I don't know if that shows up there at all, but beside those uh, little wires, there are little numbers. And there it sh shows bottom corner 41. It also shows bottom corner 41 on this plug. All right, so we're looking from the back of the plug and we know we're looking for a green wire three in from the end. All right, so it's hard to see with all that in the road. But there's, there's our green there, we can see it. All right, that's our green wire. You can see that it goes into the center of the harness or the center of the plug. So there's our green wire we're after. And then we're after a red wire fourth in from the end on the bottom row. And there he is right there red wire with a green with a gray stripe okay so what we'll have to do is separate separate them out from the loom a bit and then we'll splice into them okay so here we are there's our green wire three in from the end all right on the middle row so there's our green We've got him separated out and here's our red red wire with a gray stripe which is you look around here, four fin from the end on the lower row. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're splicing into this red wire, we're not cutting it, we're just splicing a connection to it. But this green wire will be cutting that one. All right, I'll show you a proper wiring schematic in a sec, but uh, generally, yeah, all right, we're cutting this green wire and just splicing into the red wire. Okay guys, so we're in the car and um, it's a bit overcast outside today so I've got a torch for a bit of external illumination. So we've mounted our, um, our switch to control the hardness of our shift points on the auto. And that was pretty simple, just drill a hole through the, uh, our little dash panel and attach the, uh, the nut and knob. Alright, so that's located there. Now down here, we've got our ECU loom. Okay, so I've uh, soldered those connections. Can't really see them properly under this light. But uh, they're all soldered, ready to go. So I'll whack a bit of heat shrink over them, which I've already slid along the uh, the wires. And just hit them with a the heat gun. Obviously I can't heat shrink that one, but I'll wrap it up in uh, some insulation tape. Okay, so we're done here. We've got our ECU back in. And our wires are connected, but I've got to uh, cable tie them up out of the road. Right, so we've got our heat shrink over our connections. Uh, insulation tape over the uh, spliced connection there. Now, um, that's it, pretty much. Other than tidying up, the job is done. Unfortunately, of course, we can't test it properly because the car's unregistered. So we'll have to test it at the track. Worst comes to worst at the track, if it doesn't work, we'll just slice them out of the way and uh, just go back to the way it was all right but i don't see there be any problems it uh, should all work fine all right guys i guess the next part is the uh the speedo drive